All right, let's go to the Victorian Liberal Party because we might have some common sense starting to emerge. One MP recently was brave enough to break ranks and stand against new legislation for absurd renewable energy targets, including increasing Victoria's target from 50% renewables by 2035 to 95%. Now, sadly, with the acquiescence of the Liberal opposition, the legislation passed anyway, but not without causing further friction within the Liberal Party room. Shadow Ministers Brad Batten and Richard Reardon both formally opposed the bill, and yet another sign the opposition leader, John Pizzuto, does not lead a united party. Joining me now to discuss this, the MP brave enough to say no in the Victorian Parliament, Renee Heath. Well, I wanted to talk to you tonight, Renee, because um, I read your remarks. Incredibly passionate speech. You're absolutely for the environment, but you care about jobs. You want gas on the table. You want Victoria to make things and have a, a decent, solid budget and get rid of some of this debt. Give us an understanding about why you took the stand you did. What are your reasons? Thank you so much and thanks for having me. There were two main reasons, really. The first one is I represent the Eastern Victoria region, which is an area that has been completely obliterated by Labor's green policies. And our area, particularly the Latrobe Valley, is still trying to recover from the closure of the Hazelwood Power Station, mm -hmm. which saw the loss of a thousand jobs. And plus, we had a promise that we would transition to renewables. Well, almost 15 years on, and we still haven't seen any of that. And then, as you would know, at the beginning of this year, we saw the closure of the native timber industry. Mm -hmm. That has absolutely devastated so many communities like, Hay like Hayfield and Orbost. Again, thousands of jobs have been lost and there has been promise to transition. Well, so far, the only transition we've received there is consultants coming in and saying how to close down your business. So then earlier on, oh, sorry, late last year, I went to a rally in Terrelgan and there were these signs there and it said, first, the energy industry, then the native timber industry, what's next? Our farmers. And I've spoken to a lot of people and I'm concerned that this legislation will be that attack on farmers. Absolutely. And I think there's a, a lot of reasons around that. Firstly, I think people are concerned that prime agricultural land will be cut up with solar panels and with wind turbines. But also I'm concerned that farmers and individuals will lose their property rights because of transmission lines going through their area. So there's a whole lot of reasons and, and those are the main... Uh, oh, sorry, and then the second one is I think that this legislation is completely unachievable. So in order to, receive, to um, get to the 82%, which we set uh, nationally, yep. we would have to um, install about 22,000 solar panels per day and also 40 wind turbines per month. Now, Victoria has just gone over and above that to 95%, mm. yet I have looked and, and I've looked and looked and my staff have looked and a lot of people have. We cannot find any detail of what the approach, the, you know, achievable steps are that we need to take to get to that. So I'm worried that we're misleading the public and that it's not achievable at all. So, you, so you're not wrong about the degradation of farmland, the risk to agricultural land and how angry regional communities are. I was on the other side of Victoria, so uh, on the western side of the Mallee on the weekend, and all the way along the Calder are these signs on farmers' fences saying stop the transmission lines, lack of consultation. I, there was one that says say no to a emo that's mm. you know, in charge of the rollout. They don't feel consulted. They say this will put, as I said, agricultural land at risk. And they think, it, you know, these targets are utterly meaningless and then they'll come after, you know, cattle and sheep and, you know, the meat we've got on our plate. If people are saying that and your colleagues are saying this to me behind closed doors, how is it you are the only Liberal brave enough to talk this sort of common sense in the Parliament? Well, I think, again, there's probably two reasons for that too. Number one is not everybody comes from an area that has been reliant on coal and that is currently reliant on... But they're all reliable, reliant on coal-fired power in Victoria, Renee. Well, we are and we all rely on, on um, 
farmers as well, which yeah. brings me to the second point, which is that I think that there is an awful lot of intimidation by activists on lawmakers and there is an awful lot that people know that if they stand up to something like this, mm. they are going to get shouted down, they are going to get campaigned against. And I think that there is that little bit of fear. But what I think is good that has come out of this is that I have been able to mount a pretty good argument of common sense and facts. And I think it's not until we have the ability to do that that you are able to show fact versus fiction. And I think as time goes on, and we've seen this in many other countries, for instance, some of the forerunners for renewables were areas like Italy, Germany, the Netherlands and Austria. Oh, and they've all wound it back. They've and they're all, all wind it back. But we know back. that now. What I don't understand and what my viewers don't understand is um, you're a Liberal, you're saying everything that stacks up based on fact, science and, and basic engineering. Where is the rest of the Liberal Party? Why is John Pizzuto going down and agreeing with Labor on 95% renewables when we all know it can't be achieved and we also know the Liberal Party voters and supporters don't back this Labor push? Why is this happening? And what's this going to do to his leadership, Renee? Well, I think in terms of that last question, the way I've seen it, and I've seen some interesting media coverage about what it might mean, this was never against a person. Politics is the contest of ideas and it shouldn't be the contest of personalities. Unfortunately, it has gone this way. When I voted to oppose this particular legislation, it was the idea that I was voting against. There wasn't anything in me that was voting against John. I support his leadership. I haven't had a, the opportunity to have a conversation as to why he didn't support this other than, you know, in the party room. Um, but I think there's a huge difference between particularly a seat like Hawthorne, where this wouldn't be their main voting intention, you know. I this know, but I'll, be... I'll be tough here. If you are the leader of the party, you lead for the entire state and you've got to lead in those seats that will make or break government. His problem is he sees everything through the prism of Hawthorne and that's not Victoria. It's not the Victorian economy. It doesn't drive Victorian jobs in the way that your area in the Trobe Valley does. Mm. Thank well, you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thank you. You've done. You've got a spine. <laughs> there you go, Renee Heath. Wouldn't we like more liberals like that? <laughs>